All right, so I have a little demonstration for you guys. What we're gonna be doing is visualizing what a half-life is. And we're gonna do it with a Twizzler. All right, so in your digital notebook, you'll see a chart that looks like this. You have time on one side, amount on the other. Okay, remember, what does your time always start with? Zero, so you'll put a zero for your time. Now. Instead of actual like grams or anything, we're gonna do percentages, but you'll do it exactly the same. So right now I have 100% of a Twizzler. So in the amount, you'll put 100%. All right, so we're gonna count how many times I can cut this in half, it can go through half-life. So we're gonna pretend that this Twizzler is radioactive and that it is, every time I cut it in half, it is actually decaying in a half. So we're gonna have to use our imaginations. So here, I have a Twizzler. I'm gonna cut it in half, set half of it aside. So for one half life, so you need to put a one in your time section, which I'll do right quick. Now we only have 50% or half of a Twizzler. So 50% will go in your amount side. All right, so now I'm gonna cut this in half again. And you're welcome to try this at home if you have Twizzlers or like a piece of paper or a string or something you can cut in half. It's the exact same concept. So you can um, do this if you'd like at home or you could just use my uh, data to fill in your chart. So cut that in half, set that aside. So now I have a very short piece of Twizzler. So for the second half life, now I only have half of 50%. Well, 50 divided by two is 25. So I have 25% of a Twizzler. All right, so now I'm gonna cut that in half. All right, so now I went through another half life, so put a three for the time. So to figure out how much I have, I need to do half, now I halved the 25%. So 25 divided by two will be 12.5. So now we have 12.5%. All right, we're gonna try to cut this in half. It's getting a little harder. So now I have half of 12.5%. We went through another half-life, so now we've the time will be four. And now we need to do 12.5 divided by two, which is 6.25 of course you can use a calculator for this all right now we need to cut that in half again now it's getting really difficult try cutting it half in that way so now we have half of that okay so half life for number five we have 3.125 percent and i did that by doing 6.25 divided by two all right try it again Okay, so now I have even half of that. All right, so half-life six. I'm gonna grab a calculator. I can't remember how to do three, that in half. All right, so if I do 3.125 divided by two, I get 1.56, we can round, so 1.56 percent all right we're going to cut that in half again so we went through another half life so that's seven and we do 1.56 divided by two now we only have 0.78 percent see if i could do it one more time all right, I think this will be the last one that I can do. So we went through another half-life, so that'll be eight. 0.78 divided by two. Now we only have 0.39% of the Twizzler left. So if you look at this chart, whew, you can now see the time and the amounts that's left. But there's something else I wanna show you. 
So the reason why I do this with Twizzlers is because it kind of shows us a graph of what half-life looks like. So now you can see the chart. We start, that is half. Now, of course, you can imagine we had a full Twizzler when we started off. So it would have been all the way up to here. And then we cut it in half. And you can see it kind of makes this slope. Now, so this line, it's going to get really close to zero. But do you think it's ever going to reach zero? No, it just keeps dividing by two. Now it'll get extremely close to zero where it basically is, but that's still not absolutely zero. So that's how Half-Life works. It just cuts it in half and it never really actually reaches zero. It just gets really, 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 really close. All right, so I have another little demonstration for you guys to kind of visualize what half-life look like. Unfortunately, I can't like get my hands on anything super radioactive to show you guys actual radiation going on. But this is just another visual so you guys can see what happens without having to, you know, handle radioactive stuff. So what you need, if you wanna do this at home, and I recommend, it's kind of fun just to see the different numbers because this one's a little more random than the Twizzlers. So you have a baggie of M&Ms. Of course, you can use like Reese's pieces or you could even use coins as long as one side is different than the other. Like one side of the M&M has the M, the other side does not. So I put, I think it's 15. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here, let me just take it out and count. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 M&Ms. All right, so for this, you will need to make another chart, one side with time, one side with amount. Time always starts with zero. Hopefully at this point, you have that engraved in your brain. The amount. So we're going to put the amount we'll start off with, which... We just counted, we have 20 M&Ms. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put these M&Ms in the baggie, or if you don't have a baggie, you can use a box or anything that you can shake something up in. So you'll do this, zip it, shake, and then you're gonna pour them out on the table. All right, so the way, flatten it out, make sure they're not stacked on each other. The way we're going to tell if something has radioactively decayed is if it has a M on top, then you are going to take it out. So we'll look at this. If it has an M on top, you'll take it off. So if it had an M on it, I set it aside. So these four had their M's facing up when I poured it out. So now... I will set those M's aside and count how many I have left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So after the first half-life, I have 16 left. So I'm just going to put those 16. I left those four earlier laying aside, so only 16 in the baggie. Zip it up, shake, pour it out. Whoops. I'm leaving those the way that they landed. I'm just going to move them on the plate so you can see them. All right, so here, if the M is facing up, I'm going to set it aside. So this one has an M facing up, this one, this one, this one. This one. So there was a lot in that batch. All right, so I'll set those aside, the ones with the M's facing up. So let's count how many we have left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so after round two, we have nine left. All right, so. All 
shake, 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 shake. Pull them out. Try to do it that way. If it has the end facing up, take it out. Those three, so that leaves us with one, two, three, four, five, six. So after the third, we had six left. All right, so put them back in the baggie. And we're going to keep doing this until we don't have any M&Ms that does not end up with the M facing up. So these yellows are kind of hard to see. Yep, that M was facing up. So is this one. So for our fourth time, we only have three left. Only one that time. So for the fifth time, we have two left. Pour it out. Oh, hey, none of them had it that time. So for the sixth time, we had two left. There we go, seven time we have one left. Let's see if this will be the last one. Nope, so eight time we still have one left. Oh, nine time we still have one left. Oh, come on. So 10 had one left. 11 has one left. 12. All right, so 8, 9, 10, 11 is when we ended up with zero M&Ms left. And you might be thinking, well, I thought half, a half-life, half of it went away. And these numbers aren't exactly half. No, they're not. But I wanted to show you that even naturally, without us actually calculating half lives, you'll notice it'll follow this same chart. So down here, if you remember the Twizzler, we had a full Twizzler that looked like this, and then we had half that Twizzler, and then we had half that, then half that, half that, half that, and then to where we had hardly any. So if I were to draw, make this a line graph, you see how it has this curve? how it gets really close to zero, but it doesn't actually touch zero, which we talked about. Well, now if I graph these numbers, so if I do zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then I'll do 11 here on the end. And then let's, we'll go by two, so two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So we started off with zero at 20. At two, we had 16. Three, we had six. Four, we had three. Five, we had two. Six, we had two. And then the others, we had one till we reached 11. I connect these dots. I didn't tell these M&Ms when to face M up, but look, the chart looks almost exactly the same. So I wanted to show you, like, even without purposefully cutting things in half, that it still follows that trend. Half lives still follow a trend, whether it's random or not. So I wanted you to kind of visualize what's going on. They would use, so if they're not sure what a half-life is or how much there is, they basically do something very similar to this to make the chart, and then they do a lot of math, which we're not going to worry about in this class, to figure out what the half-life would be based off this line. So if you have any questions, I hope this help, helped you visualize. In class, 
well, everyone will do this and we actually add up these numbers to make them larger and you'll see an even bigger sample and how it is also very similar. So if you wanna add your numbers to mine, you can, or you can just fill in the chart with your own results and what you got. Now on your chart, if you end up needing to add a space on each side of the T-chart, like how I ended up having to use a, almost a whole sheet of paper or a sticky note for that, you're welcome to add those to your digital notebook to put all the information you need. If you have any questions on how to do that or if you need help or if you're not sure what to do, if you can't do this project at home, let me know. I'll be happy to help you and I hope you have a great day.